What we have here is a scanned uh, transparency film directly from scanner without any adjustments whatsoever. If you want to do your classic inversion and hybrid uh, technique, you would do something like colors, levels, you'd switch output levels, and then you'd fiddle around with input levels maybe a little bit of gamma and what you get is a possible output however what you can do is use my new giggle operation uh, it's available through tools giggle operation and negative darkroom what it does, it simulates what a real-life darkroom enlarger does to a uh, negative paper. So here you have exposure uh, slider and giving it more exposure, more light makes it actually go darker because it's doing an inversion. So right now we probably would want to make this photo a bit lighter so we can make it a bit lighter and uh, already it gives us pretty nice results what we can do also is change this characteristic curve what I did, I've actually looked at um, Ilford documentation uh, for multi-grade uh, RC Delix portfolio papers and I traced, painfully painstakingly traced those curves. So uh, I choose this first multigrade for RC Deluxe and Portfolio. I don't know, I, I could have chosen uh, the later ones. I just chose the first one because they were first. So those characteristic, characteristic curves are uh, those ones. So I can choose Contrast 2 curve, which simulates what a contrast to filter does to a uh, does to the image we can uh, make it a little bit lighter uh, we can play around more we can see that contrast 3 makes a big contrast here we can see that contrast 5 makes it go like completely bonkers with contrast uh, we can see that contrast zero zero makes it go really really flat and besides those Ilford uh, contrast curves what I did is added a generic smooth curve which has a shape similar to contrast 2 but it's more of a generic uh, not really Ilford um, specific and what I've also done is added a completely flat curve which is really really flat now um, if I select contrast 3 um, what other sliders do we have? we have this gamma compensation this is generally uh, this should generally be left alone uh, it's just um, when I trace this uh, characteristic curves this x coordinate is in logarithmic, logar logarithmic scale and uh, by tradition uh, it's in log 10 base so uh, that's what this 10 mean and if I uh, change this gamma compensation it actually makes it more contrastier and or less contrastier so if I uh, slide it to the right uh, it makes it a slightly less contrastier and if, if I slide it to the left it makes it uh, more contrastier so that's another way to contra uh, control contrast besides characteristic, character characteristic curves sorry about that so uh, if I return to the traditional 10 ah um, oh, sorry about that <laughs> I want to uh, change this one. So uh, that's the basic operation, but um, 
The other thing I wanted to, this operation to have is the ability to have a dodge and burn. So, uh, if I uh, sorry, about that. if I just uh, go back, uh, what I can do is create a new layer. Let's call it burn, and create a new gradient, and uh, uh, create a new gradient. Uh, shape here. And this new gradient um, can act as a dodge or burn layer. So, uh, what I want to do right now is try to do a burn. So, let's select uh, negative darkroom again. Uh, and here we have burn is auxiliary input 1, aux uh, sorry, auxiliary 2 input. So, let's select auxiliary 2 input as a burn layer. What it does, it actually burns uh, the top half of the image. So you see in the black one is no change and the light one, uh, light part is giving it more light, thus making it a bit darker. So without the burn layer, with the burn layer, I actually managed to uh, burn the sky. What I can do also is, uh, there's this burn multiplier, I can change the burn amount, I can make it slightly more burnt out, slightly less burnt out. Be careful, it does some wonky things when you put it past. Like, you see, <laughs> when you burn it like a lot, it obviously goes black, so just be careful of that. Make it something like uh, make it something reasonable if you want to use it. Uh, the dodge is basically the same thing. Uh, it just operates on the like from the other side. So instead of black being no change, it's then white no change, and the darker the thing gets, the more dodge you have uh, in the image. Uh, I just wanted to have like the option to control both dodge and burn, even if it's even though it's like the two sides of the same coin. So um, that's processing of black and white images. Now, what it can do is also process really beautifully color uh, negative images. Uh, I could not find my own images, my own uh, pure negative images, so I borrowed uh, negative, uh, scan negative from Alex Berkey photography. So he shared his uh, PSD file. So for demonstration, I use his photo. So I have this scanned negative color image, and it's actually, actually extremely easy to do this color inversion and with this. Uh, uh, with this operation. So you do tools, your girl operation, uh, negative dark room, and right now it's doing black and white. But what I can do is check this color, color checkbox. Um, obviously, the result right now is quite <laughs> blue because uh, the uh, scan negative is quite red. But what I can do is uh, select this white balance and I can choose white balance point, for example, this gray rock. And right now we have beautifully rendered, uh, beautifully rendered uh, photo. And we can do the same thing as we did with the black and white. Uh, I have this characteristic curve. Uh, we can set it to, for example, contrast 3. Now, I realize that Ilford Multigrade is a black and white um, black and white paper, but I'm using this characteristic curve on this color photo and it actually works really nice. So I can choose contrast 3, it makes it more contrastier, I can give it more exposure, I can play around. Uh, I can play around with uh, manual white balance, so I can give it more yellow. <laughs> or less yellow. 
uh, more blue I can give it more magenta more green I can give it uh, cyan or red tint so uh, maybe give it a little bit of a warm tone yes maybe and all those things also apply to uh, color things so if we uh, look at the difference you see that uh, the uh, output is quite nice uh, what else you, you can do is to obviously do your own post-processing uh, adjustments I give it a bit of like it's it's up to you from this point. Uh, so uh, how can you get it? Uh, I've created a GitLab repo. Uh, if you have Arch Linux, uh, it's actually quite easy. Uh, I've also created an R version. So there's Google Operation Negative Darkroom Git. Uh, if you have Ubuntu or something else, you probably may have to build it yourself, but it's not that hard. I've tried, it works. If you have, if you have Mac OS, that's maybe with Mac ports, you can do something with Mac ports. If you have Windows, I actually cannot help you. You might make it work. I, I'm not sure. So it works beautifully on Linux though. So if you want to use this giggle operation to convert your scanned neg negative images, it works wonders.